It has been a long time. Not since 2002 has the BTCC been on the Donington Park Grand Prix circuit. But that is the venue for this weekend's three races in the QuickFit British Touring Car Championship. The Grand Prix Loop, the extension built in 1985 to accommodate Formula 3000. First time touring cars raced on it was 1986. And since then, it's given some spectacular racing with the heavy braking zone down at the Melbourne Hairpin and a similar corner at the end of the lap up at Goddard's. Ash Sutton is the man who comes here as the championship leader, and he's got quite an advantage over Tom Ingram. He needs desperately a big haul of points, does Ting this weekend, as does Jake Hill, who is third, and Colin Turkington fourth. Dan Kamish arrives fifth, but is out of action for the weekend. More of that in a moment. Josh Cook sixth in the championship, ahead of Dan Rowbottom, and then in eighth, it's Ricky Collard. So the big story, Dan Kamish, why is he out for the weekend? Well, he was fastest in free practice one and then towards the end of the session had a brake issue that pitched him off the road up at McLean's corner. He went across the grass on the inside as the rear of the car slewed sideways on him. And then he went across the grass, through the gravel and a big hit into the wall. Enough damage done to the car and to the cage to make that, I'm afraid, a non-starter for the rest of the weekend. Uh, Dan is OK, but uh, the car far from it, and so there's just too much work to be done here at the circuit. It's already gone back to motor base in Kent, ready to be rebuilt and advanced to Silverstone. So no Dan Kamish for the rest of the weekend. He's going to be a spectator, be it trackside or on TV. Now, qualifying is almost ready to get underway. Before the green flag is waved, let's hear the thoughts of some of the drivers and also of Louise Goodman and Tim Harvey, who did their traditional pit walk earlier on in the day after free practice two. So here we are, Donington Park, for the second time this season. But slight difference, Tim, because this time we're racing on the full Grand Prix circuit, um, as it's known which of course is very much synonymous with one particular Grand Prix back in uh, back in 1993. That was a wet one as well. And you were here, weren't you? Yeah, it was the European Grand Prix. It's the famous race where Ayrton Senna uh, drove around the outside of everybody and went on to win the race. Um, it's more famous for my winning the Renault 19, <laughs> I think, in the touring car support race. But I have fond memories of it. That was the first win for Renault in touring cars. It was the first win for Michelin. Um, so yeah, fond memories of that day. Me too, actually, because I was here as well. I was a press officer for the Jordan team. And what people don't, everybody remembers, and rightly so, Ayrton Senna's amazing opening lap, Rubens Barrichello actually went from 12th to 4th on that same opening okay. lap, which, which people forget about. And then sadly, lying in third place and ran out of fuel. That's another story. Let's talk <laughs> about the last time touring cars raced here, um, because that was in uh, 2002. Two, yep. 21 and years ago. just loitering here with intent, we happen to have two drivers who, alongside with you actually, and our own Paul O'Neill, we're all competing that weekend. I'm just going to scoot round to this been side. 21 years ago. He doesn't even look 21. It can't have been. I actually hate racing. to say this, but including Paul, we were the four that raced here, and he had the best result of the weekend. Oh. Oh. It's one good weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and Alton Park. Yeah, I remember that one. You guys, you were racing in the, the Barwell Astra that year, that and you big. were in the Atomic Kit and MG. Yeah. Do you remember that event, the last race of uh, 2002? The, I, I remember it, Tim, purely because the one and only time it's happened in my career is I pulled the, pulled the gear, gear shift off. So I was just coming out of the, the, uh, the final uh, hairpin, and the gear shift come right into my hand. <laughs> so that was, that was race over for me, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, what I was, uh, well, probably both of us, I was 18, you were probably a year younger than me, or maybe 17, more, 17. yeah. But um, to be honest, it's so long ago, I, I don't remember very, very much, <laughs> but um, as I said to Steve earlier, I don't think I'll be here in the next 21 years' time. I think it might be... Uh, It'd be one of the boys, It'd be Turkington <laughs> Junior, maybe, but definitely not me. <laughs> Did you think back then that you'd still be here now? Did you think 20, however many years down the line? Uh, you know, that, that was, I had just come out of Fiesta, so that was my my first year in touring car and i think that was the last race of uh, of the championship that year so really that could have been my last ever race in touring car you know that 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 could have been it all over so it's um yeah to, to still be going um i don't want to make you feel boys <laughs> use boys feel old but i was nine years old when you <laughs> he's doing quite a lot of his hairline as well isn't he <laughs> things considered. he's still got no grays either <laughs> don't don't talk about mine no <laughs> 
But yeah, it's um, yeah, to, to, you know, for both of us still still to be going 21 years later is you know is uh, I think we've both had a, a great career in, in British touring cars, and yeah, hopefully it keeps going for a while longer. And we're still friends, which means we're doing something right on track as well. So yeah. Uh, just talk about being back on the Grand Prix circuit. I mean, adds a different complexion to it because the first half of the track with National Circuit, you know so well it's the same as always, but it's fast, it's flowing, and then you've got this big stop um, for the S's, big stop for the two hairpins. It changes the rhythm of the, of the track, doesn't it? Completely. It's a completely different circuit. Just from adding a couple more corners, you know, it's, it's less corners added here than obviously Brands GP, but I feel like this is, is a much, much more different circuit just because for us, our brakes have gone from being okay to now we're actually having to be careful how we drive the cars because you know that that breaking down the hill into the hairpin is so steep you know and, and you don't realize until you you hit the brake pedal how hard you're hitting it and still not locking up because it's just so much grip on the tarmac and, and such steep hill but wow in the racing it's going to lead to lots of overtaking exciting stuff you know i'm going to be looking in the mirrors of colin or i'll be looking in the mirrors to me and we'll be thinking oh yeah, is yeah, someone going to lock up and hit us because their brakes are gone <laughs> yeah. you know like it'll be a bit like that but the racing will be really really exciting because of it and i i, I feel honored that we're the only two here racing <laughs> you know who actually raced this in 2002 and i think i think it's great i think we've got a bit of experience and we've got we've got one up on everyone haven't we we just need tim back on the grid yeah I can, i'll come back i'm ready to make a comeback <laughs> i think colin was smiling when you talk about the brakes thinking was, advantage yeah. rear wheel drive that's a good bit of info for tomorrow <laughs> yeah. so, uh. and it's been a talking point already here this weekend hasn't it because we have had a couple of drivers who've who've had brake issues one of them, Dan. Uh, well, yes, let's bring one in. In fact, you know, there. We'll talk about brakes, I'm afraid, mate. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. You can maybe see behind Dan uh, is an empty garage where gap. his racing car used to be because that car, well, Dan, you tell us the story. Yeah, it's, it's seen better days, unfortunately. Yeah, the rear end's fairly stoved in. Um, shell damage, um, roll cage damage. It's, um, you know, I've seen these guys pull off miracles before and they would have given it a good go, as, as many of these guys down the grid would have given it a go but um, there's a limit to what's possible. And I think even if they had parts of the, of the cage they could have cut and welded back in, it was still gonna be 24 hours, 30 hour job for, for a fair few of them. And it's just not, it's just not feasible to do it. So uh, unfortunately that's an early bath for me. Yeah, nothing you can do as a driver, was it? It wasn't uh, as a result of, we've been talking about brakes of fade or anything, it was just a technical issue, nothing you could do about. Yeah, I think, you know, you know sort of listening in and, and speaking to Tom earlier, I think what, what we're talking about is usually like a fade into a failure. Yeah. I've had absolutely a, a perfect working vehicle and no sign of an issue, and then I've had all the issue in one moment. So mine actually failed. Um, my pedal didn't go soft. It's not gone to the floor. Mine's actually gone rock hard. Like trying to, uh, there was no movement at all in the brake pedal. It's locked out totally. So mine's a bit of a different failure. Um, the guys have looked. They're still working out exactly what precautionary they've changed things on other cars just to make sure. Um, there's not much I can do. The only thing I could do was try and save self-preservation and send myself in, in backwards. Which and you're very good at doing. Yeah, doing yeah Honda. I'll be honest, thankfully, I've, <laughs> thankfully I did, because I think if I hadn't, that would have hurt um, a lot more than it, than it has. Yeah, I'm going to be a bit sore, but at least I'm here to, you know, to chat about it so quickly. I think if I had it gone in, if I'd gone in front ways, I think that would have hurt. So, um, yeah. McLean's, <laughs> McLean's corner's not been kind to you the last couple of years, has it? No, it's funny, you know, I had, such a great race at the start of the year came away with two wins and feeling quite buoyed about Donington again and now we're back to uh, two, uh, you know, two or three have been absolutely horrendous so uh, hey, it is what it is I'm here in support now so I'll see how these guys get on I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have to watch and uh, I'll wait for my turn to come at Silverstone we might just be finding a microphone for you, Dan. Watch out, yeah, you never know. Uh, well, listen, sorry you won't be out there, but best of luck to you guys qualifying um, coming up shortly. So, hope it goes well. Thank you. Good luck all. Cheers. So, cars making their way onto the pit apron. The minis that have just finished their first race of the weekend heading uh, back into the paddock. And uh, very shortly, then once the pit lane is clear, we will be good to go. Of course, that accident for Dan Camish didn't just uh, rather affect the car. It's affected the timetable as well. And that's why things are running rather late at Donington today, because it took a while to uh, sort out and repair barriers and so forth. Now, in terms of who has what for hybrid deployment in qualifying, just one second a lap for Ash Sutton. And it's a long lap, two and a half miles. So it might make quite an impact around here. Three seconds a lap for Tom Ingram. Five seconds a lap for Jake Hill, seven for Colin Turkington, 11 for Josh Cook, 13 seconds for Dan Rowbottom, and everybody else has the 15. So what does this do uh, in terms of 
affecting who we think is going to be on pole position. Well, obviously, we take down Kamish out of that equation, sadly. But remember, every time we've had a qualifying session this season, it has been a Napa racing Ford at the top of the times. So it's really Ash Sutton or Dan Robottom that you would expect to be the quicker of the uh, three cars in the team now. Can either of them do it, or are we looking for a BMW around here for pole? Well, it, the nature of the circuit is not necessarily a power circuit. It is definitely a circuit where hybrid helps. Uh, the long uphill out of the old hairpin is a key point for using the hybrid, as is out of the two hairpins. Um, but we've seen um, Ash Sutton do it before with only one mm. second hybrid. Nothing to suggest he can't do it again. Um, the only indicator we perhaps have is from um, the test here, the Goodyear tyre test, where Tom Ingram was quickened in front of Aaron Taylor-Smith. Um, but the, we don't have a, a lap record really to go on because it's so long since we raced here and the track's been resurfaced that we'll be establishing qualifying records yeah. and lap records this weekend. But, yes, it would be a brave man to, to bet against Ash Sutton or Dan Robottom, but I think uh, Jake Hill could be up there as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, by way of some sort of guide, James Thompson's notional lap record is a 41.2. Well, nearly eight seconds quicker than that, Tom Ingram at the tyre test. So uh, it went much, much better than that lap record from 2002. Uh, Tim says the track has been resurfaced. Uh, so as the cars now set to make their way to the end of the pit lane and get qualifying underway, the uh, entry also, of course, missing the... Uh, team hard entry that was Rob Huff's car at Knock Hill, Nicholas Hamilton before that, but uh, Huffy is due to rejoin for the last two races, or sorry, last two events at Silverstone and at Brands Hatch. Uh, the rigours of a mini race always mean there's a bit of clearing up to be done. There is the S's that brings you on to the Grand Prix loop where uh, you've got those tyre stacks to try and stop people corner cutting. Uh, you've got those little yellow uh, humps as well, to, again, to try to prevent people from gaining too much of an advantage. Years ago, when the Grand Prix loop was open, that was a much tighter chicane and much steeper kerbs as well, which tended to launch people if they hit yes, them wrong. Yes, the famous shot of Gabriele Tarquini on two wheels um, as he clipped the kerb. Yeah, it's a much wider and faster yeah. S's now um, with much flatter kerbs, and that's why the tyre stacks are there to try and stop anybody over um, taking too much. But I don't think it's going to be many laps before somebody hits them. <laughs> no, uh, and also, inevitably, track limits is going to be part and parcel of this. The pit lane is going to open in about 90 seconds' time, ready to get things underway uh, for our eighth qualifying session of the season. And to make the point, it is a standard qualifying, no showdown in this. It's just the straightforward 30 minutes to determine the grid ready for race one tomorrow. That is Ronan Pearson, who had his best of the season last time out at Knock Hill with uh, a fourth. Did that great job supporting... Tom Ingram at uh, fourth place, his best of the season. Of course, he had a, a, he thought, podium here on the short circuit at the start of the year, only to fail the ride height, which affected two more Accelerate drivers up in Scotland. But Ronan Pearson has been a, a very good addition to the touring car ranks this year, coming out of mini racing. Very much so. Mini uh, uh, championship, very much a breeding ground and top competition. And uh, the, those that succeed in that can do very well in touring cars. So. I'm sure he'll be relishing the opportunity this weekend again. Um, just three more weekends to go. This Silverstone and Brands Hatch, the season's going fast, isn't it? Um, just a bit of note on tyres. Um, as per the previous round here at Donington, the only tyre in use this weekend is the medium tyre. That is the prime tyre. There's no option tyre here this weekend. So that will be in use throughout uh, qualifying in the three races. We have seen wets on the cars earlier on because certainly FP2 uh, had quite a bit of rain uh, at the start and a little bit more during it, but we set fair for a, a dry qualifying. Depending on whose weather app you look at, it might be dry, it might be wet tomorrow. We shall see. Uh, some of the teams thinking we've had enough rain after Knock Hill, but I think it would give them more drama to the races. Right, green flag is imminent, Tim. Yep, final thought on tyres. This is actually the 125th anniversary of Goodyear, and to uh, mark that occasion, they've uh, uh, recreated the original wing, wing foot logo and placed it on the dry tyres where the, uh, the logo is, which is quite a nice touch. And uh, also retro stickers on the cars and... Uh uh, Goodyear. Retro commentators. Well, absolutely. You said it, not me. But yes. Uh, and uh, Goodyear as ever, uh, with a nod to the heritage. So, lots of the cars good to go. Jake Hill still with the bonnet up, I notice. So, he's out of sequence from all the other BMWs. And for the bonnet to be up at the start of the session is an interesting one. 
Yeah, that uh, he definitely would have wanted to have got out on the track straight away. So there's some fairly urgent work going on there. Neil Brown Engineering uh, engineers with the heads under yeah, the bonnet as a well. Nod, a nod of the head yeah. there. That usually means well, a nod usually means it's okay, doesn't it? It Traditionally, is. yes. 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 Yeah. Laptop withdrawn yeah. is the other positive sign. And that car set to go. Right, a look down through the Cramer curves then, out of Hollywood, and uh, then towards the old hairpin. Some great spectating uh, vantage points at Donington Park, whether it's on the National Circuit or the Grand Prix loop, because the Melbourne hairpin is always a key overtaking effort. Doesn't always work, and incidents of plenty can be found down there. It does on occasions break up the pack. If a move works at the Melbourne hairpin, then you spend the rest of the lap onto the next lap pulling away. If it doesn't work, you lose time, you then have to sort of claw it back. But we'll see how it's going to uh, make for touring car racing over the weekend. As BMWs to the fore, then Turkington, Morgan, Jelly, down towards the Melbourne hairpin. If you're wondering what the green bit is before the grass, that's the uh, motorbike penalty line. So rather than a, a drive-through, you have to take the sort of joker lap style if there's a penalty in motorbike racing these that's days. the long lap loop. Thank you very much. Beautifully enunciated. Yes. Uh, that's what it's nice there for. Nice to see cars on the Grand Prix circuit. These are camera shots we haven't mm. seen for so long, and it is great. And, you know, I think that's top jump to see a lot of overtaking and a lot of drama into those yeah. Colin Turkington's view down towards Redgate Corner and with a clear road ahead of him as ever rear-wheel drive cars will stay out jake hill has gone out incidentally so uh, after the slight bit of concern he's on track and down the pit lane as tradition dictates come lots of the front wheel drive cars for a time cross and this is pretty much the first full dry running we had some dry running at the start of free practice one but most people just scrubbing tires at that point so uh, they really haven't had a proper run yet um, all equal for everyone i know but to see how the speed build during this qualifying session. Plenty of new tyres for them to use. Uh, George Gamble, incidentally, was fastest in FP2, which was weather affected and slower than FP1. As uh, Michael Priest for Team Hard arrives in the pit lane, others up and down the pit road with the tyre cross. Jack Nutel arrives. And uh, down at the bottom end of the pit lane, you've got Napa, you've got Speedworks, and they will be doing the tyre cross as well. The quickest time in that um, Goodyear tyre test was a 33-1, so that's the sort of time we're looking for. Yeah, Dan Camish half a second down on that before his incident in the drier, quicker first session of the day. Let's see how close to it or better we get over the course of 30 minutes. Adam Morgan there turns through, having had a couple of second places this year, switching to WSR uh, with the same BMW he drove last year, but now being operated by the uh, Bennett squad. And now we start to look at absolute bests in sectors. Uh, Josh Cook looking fairly rapid at the moment for one motorsport as Colin Turkington goes across the line and does a 1 minute 42 as his uh, start up lap, if you like, his first effort. Yeah, you can see he was still warming. Difficult pit lane exit here. Drivers really have to be careful because you're pulling out directly onto the racing line. So imperative they look in their mirrors um, and look for cars coming up at speed. So downhill comes local driver Stephen Jelly, man from Leicestershire, and he comes into the uh, old hairpin. Donington Light Silverstone, a circuit that straddles two counties here, Derbyshire and Leicestershire, and uh, up towards Schwartz Curve. Then McLean's goes Stephen Jelly. And you could see the uh, Stephen using the hybrid there, the blue light flashing in the rear window, as I suspected there, coming out of the old hairpin up the hill. That's a great place to use it. Colin Turkington in the meantime has done personal best, but not going as quickly as he did last time. Adam Morgan is getting quicker and goes ahead of Colin Turkington on track. Notice the Sittner BMW uh, banner across the front. Frank Sittner for many, many years, stalwart BMW racer within the British Touring Car Championship, champion himself, and although he's no longer connected to the eponymous dealership, it uh, has a good BTCC link. Very much so, yes. Frank was a, a true character and a great racer. Um, Back in touring car days, I remember him famously falling out with teammate Mike Smith, who took a fastest lap at uh, Silverstone to potentially deny him a championship. He also fell out with Tom Walkinshaw when he was a Rover racer, which sowed the seeds for all the acrimony of 1983, but that's another much longer story. Adam Morgan does a 134.926, only a tenth off what George Gamble did in FP2. So now it's starting to ramp up. 
uh, and Morgan, Jelly, Turkington, Hill is the top four, with Ash Sutton having done an absolute best set to one then. And this the view as he comes up towards Schwantz curve then. So now the front wheel drive car starting to get into the mix. But in fact, Sutton's fast for his first sector was immediately beaten by nearly two tenths by Ingram. So the top two in the championship on fast laps at the moment, Ingram and Sutton. It'll be Sutton that comes across the line first though. Well, indeed, and then we'll see what uh, Ingram can do coming here, as you say, with that confidence of being quickest in the mid-season tyre test. Sutton then is about to get ahead of the Toyota Corolla there as he comes down towards the S's, the Fogarty S's as it now is, gets ahead of Rory Butcher and into the S's. You see now, rather than it be a real left-right, it's just a flick, isn't it, because of those low curves? Yeah, great. And in that second sector, Ingram was again a tenth quicker. So Sutton's probably going to set the quickest laps at the end of this lap, but it's going to be eclipsed by um, Ingram a little bit further back. So anything in the 33s is good, and Ash Sutton should go quickest, but then Tom Ingram to go even faster when he comes up towards the line. There is number one, then the reigning champion, so what does Ash Sutton offer up? He will do a 33.9 to go fastest, and Ingram will do a 33.6 to go faster. So Tom Ingram to the top, ahead of Ash Sutton by 0.294 of a second, and Adam Morgan is no longer third. He was when I started the sentence, but it's Tom Chilton up to third fastest. Winner here in the wet, remember, back in April. Yeah, so it's definitely front-wheel drive to the four at the moment. That was a good lap by uh, Ingram. He got blocked just a fraction at the end of the lap, but he's still right on it this lap, although he's following down Rowbottom. Um, and as you say, track limits will definitely be a feature as they start to push the limits of what the car can do. Right, here comes my list then. The first one, actually, is Connie Turkington, uh, who's had a lap time disallowed. So Connie Turkington loses a lap. Dan Rowbottom, you touched on. He was fastest on the national circuit for the opening round of the championship. Uh, they had drivers in the races. But Tom Ingram, 133.647. That's the target at the moment. Down towards the S's comes Ingram, goes through to get past the Toyota. Still got a handful of cars that haven't yet done a lap time, but yeah, that's not really a chicane anymore, is it? Yeah, that's interesting watching the gap. Oh, and Ingram's wide on the exit. Look, he hasn't gained anything on Robottom. I think Robottom's on a good lap here. It's going to probably, probably put him top three anyway. Yeah, two personal bests for Robottom. Jake Hill's got third overall now. Jake has done a 33-9. This is Ash Sutton's view coming into Goddard. Then the last left-hander. It drops down slightly up towards the timing line. And Ash has done a personal and an absolute best and saves second, but he's brought the margin down to nine thousandths away from Ingram then. Point double oh nine between them. Robottom goes third, a 33.944 then for Robo. That's Sam Osborne in the third nap of Ford. He's seventh at the moment. Yeah, so uh, that's a great, great performance by uh, Sam Osborne in the yeah. first run on these tyres. Very competitive. Um, the three remaining Napa racing cars all going very well indeed. But it's Ingram to the fore at the moment by that tiniest of margin, nine thousandths of a second. Turkington up to fifth, Collard up to sixth, Moffat up to eighth, and then you start to lose lap times, and Rodan Pearson has now lost a lap time. Oh, someone going straight on there, one of the team hard cars, literally missing the right-hand part of the chicane completely. Couldn't get a glimpse of who it was, but it's thrown a lot of stones up back on the circuit. It was indeed. One into the pit lane. Oh, that's Jack Butel. He only just made it, didn't he? That's Michael Kreese, isn't it? Going through the gravel. Yes, and he's in the pits. So Michael Kreese with the three-digit travel seven number on the windscreen. Uh, goes rally crossing and comes into the pit lane. Now, who else is looking rapid at the moment? We're getting good sector times coming out of Osborne, who's up to fifth. Colin Turkington sixth. So Sam Osborne going great guns here. Wow, fantastic! This is great to see because this is a this is a tricky circuit driving wise. Technique uh, plays a big part in it through the fast stuff and through the slow. So. Yeah, fair play to Sam Osborne. He actually offered to give up his car for uh, for, Matt, uh, for uh, Dan Camish, which was quite a gesture considering he's chasing Jack Sears on us, but uh, that wasn't uh, accepted and or even agreed by a token. But a very kind gesture. Yeah. yeah, the regulations say once you've started the weekend, you can't change cars, change chassis, so it wasn't an option. Uh, we've lost a lap time now for Moffat, lost a lap for Morgan and Jack Utel, so these track limit dramas coming thick and fast, aren't they? They certainly are, um, as we expected in this stage, into the... into Oh, 
We've got a red flag. We have. We have a red flag, so no more times allowed. And whoever it is that's caused that will be... Oh, it's Nick, Nick Halstead. Halstead. And he's spun coming into the S's, hasn't he? He's facing the wrong way. You can see the witness marks, but he's had a, a spin at the S's, I would propose. And he's stuck in the gravel. Yeah, and uh, out of qualifying. So there'll be a few people who are just on their peak of their tyre run there that will be very disappointed about that. Um, I mean, in actual fact, on that lap, well, Osborne had set... Uh, uh, set a personal best, no, um, but yeah, yeah, two personal had, bests, yeah, yeah, two personal yeah. bests, and had to pit, so he was on for an even better lap. But Josh Cook, who was 25th, had just gone seventh in the nick of time before the flag came out. That so got Josh, in. yeah, that counted, and that's brought him up the order, which could be quite significant. We've had effectively 10 minutes of the session, uh, but there is Nick Halstead's car, it was at the S's, as I was suggesting, and so not for the first time, I'm afraid, this season, a red flag triggered by the Hyundai and everybody else has to come into the pit lane then that car can be removed shouldn't take long should it no hopefully not should be easy to get him out of that it just caught the beginning of the uh, uh, chicane on the left and rotated the car into the gravel and uh, he walked away dare say to have a chat with himself about what he did wrong and he's had that lap time taken away for track limits as well as the fact that he's called the red flag so he'll be at the back with no lap time you can see how much gravel is already on the road and into the chicane or sorry into the s's comes nick halstead well and... he's come in too fast already yeah. lost the rear... to, to be fair to nick that was uh, a little bit of cold rear tire temperature perhaps on the right rear that uh, caused that to go around there aren't many places you lean on the right that much so maybe it was a slightly cold rear but it certainly rotated and then being having the gravel on there didn't help he doesn't look too upset actually does he <laughs> so no, i fairness, would be fuming yeah <laughs> he's had some travails this year but he can laugh keeps smiling off. and bounces back yeah so uh, nick halstead is the cause of the red flag so he loses his lap time his best lap time he lost his other lap time for track limit abuses so he'll be at the back of the grid no lap time to count uh, so uh, 24 of them then dispute the remainder of the grid tom ingram is being shown not as being in the pits but as having stopped out on the circuit which is slightly unusual yet on on the uh, on the track monitor he's shown as being in the pits odd Let's see who else was in strife. That's Sam Osborne glancing off the tyres. I mean, a big tank slapper, but he survived the moment. But it so looks like a rally stage, doesn't there's it? There's a few people having slides there turning in. So there's obviously some little issue there, whether it was everybody on the same part of their tyre run, but there's quite a few having a, a moment there. But you're right, Nick Halstead doesn't look too upset by all of this. But uh, hopefully now it's going to be able to hop back into the car and assist in its recovery. Track sweeper arrives on the scene. Marshalls with brooms arrived to try and sweep some of the gravel away and uh, hopefully once that car's plonked back onto the road nick halstead, halstead can drive it back to the pit lane yeah he's and, left uh, his helmet though on the marshall's the post hasn't he because he walked off with his helmet on so he's left his helmet over oh he's just remembered <laughs> here to help nick <laughs> oh i forgot my helmet keeps him fit there you go sir <laughs> looking for this now where's the oh i've oh, dropped, dropped my glove, glove now, now. Dropped my Where's the steering wheel? Where did I put the steering wheel? <laughs> Sorry, Nick, we're only having fun. <laughs> Meantime, uh, Coppice is a bit calmer and uh, fans occupying themselves in whatever way they see fit while we wait for the resumption of the session. Tom Ingram the fastest by 0.294 of a second as you await the restart of the session. Nick Halstead is uh, sort of suited and booted once more and uh, ready to bring the car back to the pit lane. So fingers crossed we aren't too far away from getting things underway. I'm still slightly curious as to why Ingram isn't being shown as in the pit lane. But anyway, uh, he is there. And so also is Ash Sutton, who's not being shown in the pits. But he is, I think, also in. Unless they trip the exit beam just before the red flag came out, had to be pushed back. That's the only thing I can think of. Mm. So we've had six people lose a lap time. Seven people. Michael Kreese is also now through the system lost uh, a lap. Remember, he went off the road completely at the S's, didn't he? Straight through the gravel. That was probably the lap that <laughs> counted as exceeding track limits. <laughs> You're probably right about that. Uh, the uh, 
Accelerate squad. Getting the cars turned around, ready to go back out. There is Tom Ingram, so he is in the pit lane, even though the timing screen is saying something different at the moment. Tom had an interesting first practice when a wheel came off mm. uh, going down the grain of curves. I didn't, didn't do any damage, but I didn't quite hear what the cause of that was, but clearly no ill effects of it, but not what a driver wants anyway. Yes, when he was interviewed straight afterwards, he said it, it might have been a, a hub failure or something, yeah. but that was uh, the immediate reaction. Mm. What they got to the bottom of, I can't tell you. There is Nick Halstead on his way back to the pit lane. Yep. And that's the end of his session. And a few more stones to add to the track already. Yes, you mentioned earlier on about Gabriele Tarquini's two-wheeling moment at the, yeah. the, if you like, the old S's with the high curves. There was also, many years before that, John Morris with his Volkswagen Golf, who, who barrel rolled it, if you remember. Yeah. He was launched over the curves. John was no uh, dummy in a saloon car. He was very uh, good in Volkswagens in the British Saloon, then British Touring Car Championship. So... Uh, in many ways, although it's changed the, the dynamic of that part of the circuit, you could argue it's made it safer. It certainly doesn't pitch cars off in no. quite the same dramatic fashion. Yeah, definitely. But it obviously does encourage drivers to take yeah. more curb. And yeah. with it... Uh, you win uh, some, you lose some, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, we're using the, uh, the the normal pit lane entry. We're not using the uh, Grand Prix loop pit lane entry. I think that's to allow officials room for the um, scrutineering patch. It is, and also traditionally, uh, sort of incident vehicles are housed there, so they can be scrambled quite quickly. Um, I don't think even for British GT um, they've used that pit in. It's been the, the this pit yep. in. It's not used very often anymore. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can put some of the, the emergency vehicles up there and effectively block off that part of it. That pit in, of course, which locked a big uh, chunk off Goddard's, was used for Ayrton Senna's fastest lap in that European Grand Prix that you were talking about earlier on. Uh, and it came in because it was this wet, dry Grand Prix. And as he committed to pitting, he then thought, actually, now I'll go back out again. Never stopped, drove through the pit lane. And hence, it was a very, very quick uh, lap indeed that, that uh, counted for the fastest lap of the race, even though it was a much shorter lap. Yes, I think it gave every racing driver an idea. Oh, I must try that. Yeah. I must try yeah. that if I ever get the chance. <laughs> Right, the pit lane is going to open in four seconds' time. And the team's ready to push back the cars to get things underway. We've got 19 minutes and 27 seconds on the clock. We are back in business then. Tom Ingram is the fastest. And remember, nobody other than a Napa Racing UK driver has had a pole position this year. Can he be the first person to change that? Let's find out as the cars team by team are released. So Tom Ingram has to wait for the Fords to go. Uh, then he can set off now down the pit road and the clock ticks on down of course just under two and a half miles it's a long out lap then you've got your start up lap then for the front wheel drive cars and a tire cross so it'll take a little while before we get back to representative uh, qualifying times the grand prix loop itself uh, was added on to donington in 1985 for many many years donington had been the home of the or one of the homes of the british formula two chair well, round uh, of the european formula two championship when it came to the uk in 1985, Formula 2 had been replaced by Formula 3000, and FISA, then the, the sporting arm of the FIA, said, well, yeah, you can have a Formula 3000 race, but our new regulation is that the circuit's got to be over a given amount of uh, lap mileage, uh, so you need to make the lap longer somehow. So the easiest way that uh, Robert Fernald, who was then running Donington, could do it was to build this extension at the back of the paddock to make up to two and a half miles, and uh, hence the Grand Prix loop was born. Yeah, two things have gone, though. The two bridges, the Starkey's Bridge and the, the Dunlop Bridge. I think the Dunlop Bridge was bought by Chris Evans, wasn't it? Is that right? I think so, yeah. OK. So, uh, it's the, a lot of lines round this corner, um, round Coppice. There's, uh, you can tighten the line, you can widen the line. Depends on the wet as well, but we often see a variation of lines there. And we also see the cars with great front ends tuck inside cars coming out of there as they lose a bit of front grip. And, Ash Sutton in particular has been star at that over the years. They've swept some of the stones away, so that's good. And everybody starts on a new tyre run. Some will be on four new and going to change again when they come into the pits. Others will maybe just have a pair of new ones on, or um, we'll see. So let us start to piece together then where we need to be looking. Uh, seventh, Josh Cook. Eighth, Ricky Collard. Um, 12th Rory Butcher and well, the Vauxhalls, they're normally fairly rapid around Donington. 15th 
17th and 23rd. Mikey Doble had a, a fire, didn't he, in FP1. He was a, an early red flag triggerer, uh, the uh, Jack Sears Trophy leader. Ash Sutton, the man that leads the Goodyear Wingfoot Award for uh, qualifying performances, and their downhill heads, uh, Rory Butcher. Toyota was looking a bit more fleet of foot at Knock Hill, and uh, again, there's a bit of optimism within the team this weekend for improved results. Rory on the hybrid then as he comes up out of the old hairpin, heading up towards Schwartz Curve. There is Ricky Collard with a big flash of the lights to warn the traffic ahead of his progress. He's eighth in the times. Uh, Ricky's regular engineer, Paul Ridgeway, away on TCR duty this weekend. So uh, team principal Christian Dick steps into the engineering hot seat for Ricky. Collard's on a mission, isn't he? Gets past Jake Hill. Uh, Ricky has done two personal bests, so he should be on for an improver here. Yeah, bear in mind the session only just restarted, so he was... Oh, that was <laughs> an absolute limit through the chicane. Beautiful to watch, though. Really, really exciting. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what his lap time is at the end of this. Um, he's pushing ever so hard. This is why we love watching qualifying folks see everybody right on the limit. Yeah, that was George Campbell up against the tyres. Ricky Collard and him have already gone through that part of the circuit, but eighth he is, and improvement beckons. And as he breaks the beam at the timing line, he's up to second, a 133.725. So that's 78,000 shy of Tom Ingram. Uh, Sutton down to third, Robotham down to fourth, Hill, Turkington, and George Gamble zealotry helped him. He's up to seventh after that moment at the uh, S's. There yeah, he is. Two good laps by the, um, the the Toyota boys, really good laps. At effectively a home circuit, because although the team is from Cheshire, Toyota's built down the road in Derby, so Donington is always regarded as a, a home race for Toyota as a brand. So Ingram, Collard, Sutton, Robottom, Hill, Turkington, Gamble, Osborne, Cook and Chilton is the top ten. Yes, yeah, quite a variety of cars in that uh, top ten. We're looking at uh, Adam Morgan. Pushing hard in the BMW, the West Surrey BMW. Jack Butel was an improver last time, and so also Daryl De Leon, who is 19th. It's Adam Morgan coming into the S's. So the high shot really does show you how much curve they use and how they can just flip through rather than a proper turn left and right. Yeah, it makes it look slower from that cam camera angle as they're coming towards you, but it really is a uh, quite a fast chicane, which is why cars are losing the rear end sometimes. It's great to drive it. But with that new line, if you like being a flick rather than a hard brake left and right, does it take away an overtaking opportunity? Yeah, pretty. I mean, overtaking into the chicane, very, very difficult. Yeah. If somebody wants uh, it up, you can get them on the exit, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. If someone's made a huge mistake up at um, uh, Coppice, then you can get a run on them. Yeah, but sure. generally speaking, you're trying to tee up through the S's and overtake into the Melbourne area. George Gamble getting out of people's way and then slotting into the pack, letting the traffic disappear completely. Who else is improving? Josh Cook goes third then. Number 66, Josh Cook's on the 133.842. So we saw good pace out of that car at uh, Knock Hill. Ricky Collard has just had a lap time disallowed, but it's not, I don't think, going to affect things. He should be able to stay second. So and, Collard. Yeah, Andrew sorry. Watson was uh, went up to seventh. Um, our uh, camera driver, camera car driver, Ronan Pearson. Oh, no, 16th, I thought he did improve. Uh, well, he had, but he's had a lap time taken off him. Ah, he's second, so now he's being shown a driving standards flag. So, yeah, you blink and you miss it all. Uh, Andrew Watson, as you say, seventh. Adam Morgan improved, but only to 13th. That is Tom Chilton. And in replay, going down through the Craner curves. Big lock up at the old hairpin for the BMW. Was that Adam Morgan? Or was that Jake Hill? Jake Hill, isn't it? It is, yeah. That's cold front tyres, which is going to be a bit of an issue here. Um, in the early laps of the racing tomorrow, the BMWs not getting their tyres up temperature quite as quick. The fronts particularly, they'll be not sitting ducks, but everyone will be trying to jump them at the start of the races, I can assure you. So there is uh, Ash Sutton, fourth at the moment. Uh, looking at the first non-Napa pole at the moment, although Sun's just done an absolute mess in the first sector, but down in the middle. Yeah, down a bit in the middle, but still on a good lap. Uh, interesting where that car makes its time. The first sector, of course, is down the craners, so all about bravery. The second sector, using the hybrid, he won't be as quick. Ingram went faster again last time, so to move the goalpost a little bit, his last lap for pole, a 33-5-1-3. It's not as good as he did in the tyre test. Here comes Ash Sutton, then up towards the line. 
so he's got to be in the low 33s now he's up towards the timing line breaks the beam on a 33 5 6 2 goes second 49 thousandths down on ingram and with only one second of hybrid use per lap i mean it just shows that class always comes to the top doesn't it the top two in the championship with the least yeah. amount of hybrid for qualifying and they're still one two with barely um 49 um <laughs> hundreds between them. Uh, Ronan Pearson's lost a third lap time and now also Dan Robottom has had a lap time taken off him. Robo is fifth quickest at the moment. So Ingram, Sutton, Collard, Cook, Robottom, Hill, Turkington, Watson, Lloyd, Chilton is the top ten. This is Turkington seventh in the time, so he improved in the first sector last time, down in the middle. Yeah, expecting something a bit more out of Turkington and Hill, aren't we, for yeah. the last uh, 11 minutes of this session? I mean, That's a very wide line there. That means he's starting a fast lap rather than finishing it. Going wide gets you a nice slingshot onto the start-finish line. Colin Turkington has uh, tricked us in the past by leaving it late in the session. Replay of Daryl De Leon up against the tyres very nearly, and Aaron Taylor-Smith, kaboom, does some damage. Yeah, it does some damage, but neatly moves the tyres back a little bit for everyone else. So if those tyres don't get moved back, even that six inches can really widen the exit there and make it faster for everybody else. A bit like Thruxton, where we saw the session be stopped to put those tyres at the chicane uh, back in place. And Aaron Taylor-Smith has lost a lap time for track limit offences. Just Let's looking at Adam Moffitt, who is uh, currently in... 12th place. Uh, just pretend for a moment you're Ash Sutton. Where do you use your one second of hybrid? <laughs> oh, I think you probably use it coming out of one of the hairpins. Yeah, probably one out of the hairpin. Melbourne hairpin Get or Goddard at the end of the yeah, lap. Yeah. Yeah. Goddard's probably. Butcher has the hybrid use there. Just a little burst coming out of the gate. He's probably saved if he's got any left. He'll use it coming out of... Um, the Melbourne hairpin, and we'll see the light flash in the rear window if he's got it. Can't see from that angle. Not a, um, a fastest sector for him. Right, Ash Sutton, absolute best in the first sector of the lap. So Sutton, if he's uh, found himself clear track space, well, he's actually up at McLean's had to get past a slower car, but Sutton is still pushing. Uh, and uh, there he is, he's got ahead of the team hard Cooper. What's Sutton done in the middle sector? We'll find out in a moment then, because as he comes now up towards the end of sector two, he's back in clear air, but he did have to wriggle past the car going up to McLean's. He's about to get to the end of that second sector, waiting to see whether it is green or purple. It's purple, so two absolute best for Ash Sutton. He's on it, the man is on it, the championship a leader is really on it, going for yet another pole. And he's used the hybrid look on this lap, hybrid unavailable, so that suggests that he's used it all on this lap. Comes out of the Melbourne hairpin then behind him, Ricky Collard has done a personal best, Tom Ingram has gone back out. Total concentration for Ash Sutton as he comes up towards Goddard's then, breaks for the final hairpin, goes left, lifts the rear wheel, tucks it in, comes on to the pit straight now, pulls the trigger if you like, accelerates up towards the timing line and as he breaks the beam, he goes quickest of all on a 133-199, purple, 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 three absolute best, fantastic lap. And not just by a bit, by a massive three tenths of a second. Wow, what does everybody else have? Where does he find this time? Where does he do it? You talk about earlier uh, venues where he's had the pole position with one second a lap of hybrid, and at Thruxton, for example, we were told, yeah, but it's a momentum circuit. Here, totally different type of circuit with the stop-start nature, one second of hybrid use, and still he can deliver. Yeah, I mean, purple in all, all three, three sectors. That is the perfect <laughs> Absolutely. lap, isn't it? And as you say, not just by thousands, three-tenths of a second. And at this stage in qualifying, when everybody's already had you know, quite a few goes, that's a big chunk more to find. But I did suspect Ooh. as a huge <laughs> moment there for Ricky Collard, as I did suspect the times would get better yeah. because of the lack of running in free practice one and two. Um, the guys are able to dial it in just that little bit more. So Hill's got one more run, he's warming his tires. And Ash Sutton's pole position lap 
is two thousandths of a second slower than Ingram's quickest lap in the tyre test. Yeah, the only thing is, though, in the tyre test, they could use their full allocation of hybrid. Yeah. So they could have used 15 seconds uh, during that test. And also, they were testing tyres that uh, they perhaps aren't racing on now that might have, because it was a tyre test. So um, it's still a massively fast <laughs> lap. <laughs> and it's very impressive. So Sutton, Ingram, Collard, Having had what we thought was a massive moment, Ricky probably just shrugged it off, you know what he's like. Yeah. Uh, Josh Cook fourth, Dan Robottom fifth, he's in the pit lane. Jake Hill sixth, and therefore heading the rear wheel drive contingent right now. Yep, on board with Dexter Patterson coming through McLean's and up to Coppice. He's weaving a bit, so I suspect he's still getting a feel of warming tyres, getting a feel for it in the Team Hart Cupra. So he comes yeah, then on. Warming tyres still. Yeah. Uh, now Hill's on it. Hill's on it now. He, he's. This will be a good lap, hopefully, to watch. What's he done in the first sector? Not a personal best in the first sector. Out of McLean's, as we've had an improvement from Mikey Doble to go 11th. He's just gained him 13 spots. That's quite a good effort there. So Mikey Doble with a really decent 134, 137. Goes up into 11th in the times. Here comes Hill. Collard, by the way, has done a personal best in sector one. And Jake Hill at the end of sector two heads to the timing point. That's a personal best in sector two. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I, I think it'll be the next lap. Hill's building on this. He's, he's pushing, but I think the BMW has a bigger window than the front wheel drive cars for how its tyre performance is. And because he was a bit slower in the first sector, um, I think it'll be the next lap that really counts for, for Jake Hill. So he's building up to the next one, if you like, as the real demon effort. Running out of time, they all are. Just over five minutes of the session to go now as uh, Jake Hill heads to the timing line, but Ash Sutton still the fastest by over three tenths of a second. Jake Hill goes fourth then, so two personal bests. George Gamble has just lost a lap time. And here in replay, launching over the kerb is Ricky Collard. Hits the kerb and avoids the tyres. Yeah, they was too greedy on the inside there. It actually just flicked the car, didn't it? Uh, but nevertheless, Collard is still, still third. His maximum attack style is still working for him. Right, so Jake Hill down again in the first sector, but sectors two and three on the previous lap, the way he clawed back the time. Let's see if he can do that again. Yeah, sector one is obviously not the best for the BMW. He's close, though. I mean, he's the quickest. He's actually he's he's quite a few tenths away from the fastest in sector one. The fastest in sector one is a 20.4, and Jake Hills was a, a 23.5. So yeah, a little way off. There is Stephen Jelly, and he's having a nightmare of a session. 21st, so. Stephen with something to find, and he's looking at over a second and a half to find to get anywhere up near the front of the grid. Yeah. Very odd, this. Has Robottom got a bit left? Well, Robottom's tyre pad is longer. He's gone back out, hasn't he? He has gone back out. Another black and white flat for Jack Butel as we pick up Andrew Watson. And Tom Chilton's just gone quicker up to eighth ahead of Andrew Watson, therefore. So Chilton goes eighth. And with just over three and a half minutes to go, Robottom weaving to warm up tyres, goes on to a quick lap. Utel's had another lap time taken off him. Watson on a personal best in the first sector, but he's got traffic ahead of them. They're staying out of his way. He's had a nice little toe off them, but he was uh, personal best in sector one and in sector two. So two personal bests so far for Watson. So let's see what he can do come the end of this lap. Dexter Patterson now losing the lap time. Yeah, could potentially get in the top six. Oh, a little bit wide there, wasn't he? Bit deep into the uh, Goddard's hairpin. Turkington up to third. Jake Hill, personal best in the first sector on this lap. So the BMWs late in the session, perhaps starting to come good, which might give optimism for Stephen Jelly as well. But Turkington is up to third then ahead of Collard. Hill, personal best in sector one. And Dan Robottom. Not this lap, but the next one, I think, is going to be the real push lap for him. Yeah, those BMWs are just building temperature in their tyres, getting them to the perfect balance, the perfect temperature. And Turkington third, as you say. Hill on a personal best in sector one, but not in sector two. Ingram, absolute best sector one. 
So Tom Ingram has done a 20.3 within the first sector. He's got to find three tenths of a second uh, to get up with that sat. And you're looking at Hill down at the Melbourne hairpin there. He's got one more corner to go before he gets to the timing beam. And it is the uphill climb towards Goddard's over the brow and then into the hairpin itself. Big lockup though from Jake Hill and he scrabbles out wide. It's a little bit messy. You can see that he's attacking the lap, but it's ever so slightly scrappy as he comes up towards the beam now, and the lap is slower. It's a 34-2, so he stays fifth. Yeah, he had two lockups, one at Goddard's hairpin and uh, one at the at the Melbourne. That cost him a lot. Ingram, how's he doing on his lap? Two personal bests, two absolute bests. And as he comes now, Jake Hill has had a lap time taken off him for track limit abuse, so he drops to sixth. So Hill goes backwards. Ingram, in the meantime, wants to go forwards. He's got one more corner to go. He needs to do a 33.198 or better, but he's a little bit wide there. Is he coming out of Goddard? Up towards the line then. Clock ticks on down. It's a 32, is it? Let's see. It's a 33.3, and it's enough to go to second in the times. He's missed out by 0.137 of a second. And he lost that all at the last corner. Two absolute bests, and then he lost it at the last. He'll be absolutely kicking himself. He knows he, he had it in his hands there. Now, what about Robossum? He's done a personal best in the first sector, but he's down in the middle. And Ash Sutton, in the meantime, has done a personal and an absolute best. He could go quicker again here. So Ash Sutton into Goddard, up towards the line. Can he rub their noses in it by going even faster than a 33.199? Uh, he can. He can do a 33.154. Tremendous effort. And he was slower in the third sector, but he's still got faster still. 133.154. It just continues to impress. Collard up to third with his best lap. Turkey took down the fourth, Taylor Smith fifth. That took still a very good result from Taylor Smith. Robottom is ninth, didn't improve. Ronan Pearson is now ninth. And Adam Morgan is eighth. He's just pushed one or two further down the order. Uh, but that lap by Ash Sutton. Another outstanding effort, even losing a fraction of time in the last sector. We're kind of running out of superlatives for him now. Well, checker flag is now out, so it's only those who are still on a lap, and there aren't any purples being shown, at least in the first sector. Um, so, and I can't see it. The first, first, his first sector is Robottom yep. on a lap. Robottom's on a good lap. That's a good first sector, only a tenth off the best. So Robottom possibly could improve on this lap. Depends where he is in traffic to a degree, doesn't it? As you look there at Ash Sutton, provisional pole position driver. And Ash for a uh, 12th career pole, provisionally. And uh, it will be for him a fifth of the season. Right, this is Robottom. End of sector two, and he's junked a little bit of time there. So it's been a slower second sector, possibly traffic. Uh, Tom Ingram, lap disallowed. So Ingram's 13th lap taken off him for track limit offences, having pushed so hard, not only did it not work, it was a track limit offence lap anyway. So there's only really the Dan Robottom question as to whether he can improve that will affect the order. Ash Sutton's done the work, he's got to get through the technical checks post-session. Robottom up to take the check of flag. If he can improve, it's not going to be a huge improvement, I wouldn't have thought. A, a row on the grid at most, maybe. Let's see whether it's even an improvement at all as he heads towards the line then. And we wait for the Napa Racing Ford to break the beam, and he bails. Robottom heads into the pit lane. So he aborts the lap as Sam Osborne has a lap time taken off him right at the very end. So an amazing fourth, is it fifth pole position for Ash Sutton. I think uh, Tom Ingram will rue that little mistake at the final corner. Um, definitely cost him a little bit of time. Um, and uh, uh, perhaps Jake Hill, his two lockups as well. But a great pole for Sutton. Collard a good third. Aaron Taylor Smith, an excellent fifth. And um, Pearson, Ronan Pearson, ninth. That's a great performance for qualifying from him. Colin Turkington having a lap time taken off him at the very end. Uh, Ricky Collard's car in the meantime gets the thumbs up, put onto the scales, take a technical team. And a good effort that by Ricky to be third in qualifying. The Toyotas, as I was saying in the session, had a bit more pace at Knock Hill and uh, looking good again here, except the lap times are still filtering through the system. George Gamble's just lost a lap time, so he drops down to 18th. 
So what we thought we knew was the order may not be the final one. <laughs> right. But uh, Ash Sutton, no question about that lap. And yeah, as you say, Tom Ingram did go wide and cost himself uh, a little bit of time. But the uh, lap on which he did that was taken off him anyway because of uh, a track limit offence. So was it that lap or was it the following lap? No, it was his 13th, which well, was that one, yeah. So frustration for him. Uh, but he's still on the front row. So he is, yeah. And we have positive. a fascinating race in prospect. We do indeed. Ash Sutton tops qualifying at Donington on the Grand Prix circuit ahead of Tom Ingram and then Ricky Collard. Colin Turkington, one of only two drivers to have raced a touring car on this configuration. Uh, fourth ahead of Aaron Taylor-Smith and Jake Hill, sixth. Then it's Josh Cook from Adam Morgan, Ronan Pearson and Dan Robottom in tenth. 11th quickest, Tom Chilton, ahead of Andrew Watson, and then Aidan Moffat. Rory Butcher, 14th from Sam Osborne, then Mikey Doble. Dan Lloyd, a long way back, ahead of George Gamble, Michael Kreese, but Stephen Jelly really struggling in his BMW, only 20th. 21st, Dexter Patterson, then Jack Butel, Jade Edwards, 23rd, Daryl DeLeon, 24th, and Nick Halstead. No time because his lap time taken off him uh, for track limits. His other lap time taken off him for causing the red flag, so he will start at the back of the grid. But for a 12th career pole, and five of those have come this season alone, Ash Sutton is a very happy man indeed, as is the team owner, Pete Osborne, there, who embraces him. And... Uh, Dad's pretty pleased about all that as well. Well done, Ash Sutton. We'll try and hear from him in a few moments' time once all the celebrations are done. So the 100% record continues, doesn't it? That is eight out of eight in terms of poles for Napa Racing UK. Never been done before, a clean sweep of poles in a season uh, by one team. Yeah. Only two more races to go. Exactly, two more qualifying efforts for either Napa to carry on the trend or any other team to try and break that uh, amazing run that I mean, Napa Racing has had. Could he really do it at uh, Silverstone with just four corners and long straights and no hybrid? Yes. That would be yes. Yes, okay. frankly. Um, and even if I he mean, can't, you know, Camish or Robottom could do it for the team. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fascinating stuff to see how, if, when can anybody stop this Napa Racing steamroller, uh, of which Ash Sutton has played an enormous part. And, uh, he is the fastest by 0.182 of a second. And a very happy Tony Carosa, his engineer. So it's well done. Right, Yawn, another Napa Racing pole, Lou. He's done it again. He has indeed. He's just uh, gone off to get a drink. Um, Ash, congratulations fifth pole of the season. David just described it as the Napa steamroller and you are very much at the helm, aren't you? Yeah, that was, uh, I'll be honest with you, when Tom put his lap in, I, I thought, Jesus, we've got to dig a, dig a bit deep here, but I didn't realise we had that, that potential in the car. Obviously, no one's had a, a true true run today with the weather and the red flags and stuff, so but, oh, that, that come alive, it was uh, mega, just mega for Napa Race UK, for Motorbase, for myself, Five poles, I think that is now. That's some effort. And you were you were yellow in the final sector, so you you weren't even you know as quick as you could have been on that lap. Yeah, I got told over the radio we were only a fraction down compared to because obviously I think we had uh, we weren't quite as quick as Tom in the last sector. It was a little bit left on the table, but that was it. That was that lap. So I uh, I dug a little bit deeper on the on the last set of tyres. We put a set of fronts on and, and see if we could gain a bit more just to sort of cover our back because Tom went purple sector one, but he didn't need to do it in the end. Once, uh, once again, um, you know, you've done this with the least hybrid of, of anybody on the grid. Tim actually said during that session, where does he find this time? Um, would you like to tell Tim where you find it? The squiggly bits between the straight bits, but um, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm just so in tune with the car at the minute. The guys give me exactly what I need. I can, I can ask for a little bit more, the car will give me it. So. Yeah, I can't complain. It's the car's on rails. I'm in a good place. So we just need to get off the line and, and have a good, clean race. Well done. Congratulations. Right, let's see if we can find... Well, I'll tell you what, I've got Ricky Collard, a very happy Ricky Collard. What are you checking out in those cars, Ricky? Um, anything interesting in there? Um, what's really interesting, if you look at the tyres, I've obviously got the special Goodyear tyre this weekend, celebrating 125 races or years. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's great to see an old-school tyre back. And if you have a look at my tyre, I've still got a tyre from wherever we last run mediums. Um, so the thing was lively. It was really, really larry. And that's, I kind of kicked myself. Alton Park was a great lap um, to get third. Today, you know, potentially there was, there was a, a pole in there um, and I didn't quite extract it. So the team 
done a better job than what I did today. Um, so I'm a little bit frustrated, but Jesus, Louise, I was holding on. You are so well placed, um, you know, when it when it comes to the first race. I don't want to jinx it, but obviously you, you got a podium finish last time out at Knock Hill, which you inherited one, which is like unheard of. I normally get them taken away, so to inherit one was, was pretty cool. But it would be so good to actually stand on that podium this time around, wouldn't it? A hundred percent, and uh, you know, you got great, great driver there. Is Josh second? Ingram. I'm right in the middle of the title fight here, aren't I? So I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to be sending it. So we've been making really good starts this year. If we can make a, a, a demon start, you know, I've got nothing to lose out there. I'm going for a win. And uh, I've got a little bit extra hybrid to use over the other guys. So I've got to be tactical on where and when I use the hybrid. Um, but no, the, the thing's loose, it's fast. I didn't extract the most out of it today, so credit to Speedworks and Toyota. Um, but yeah, I've got to bring my A game tomorrow if I want to want to get a W and spray some champagne. Well done, we'll see you out there. Um, and let's grab a word now, he's just on his way down. He's panicking about the fact he hasn't got a hat. Sorry, we're just going to have to go with the hair as it is, mate. Um, front row starts, but I, I know there's going to be an element of frustration. You were so close to, to breaking that Napa stranglehold on, on pole position. Nearly. Nearly. My fault. Yeah, my fault. Um, yeah, frustrating, but look, to take the positives away from it, it's the closest we've been all year, and the cars felt alive this weekend. Um, and there's probably an element in, in me getting excited because the car's you know, feeling good again, that, that uh, it feels like we can actually challenge for pole. So there's probably a bit of excitement from me, from, uh, from my side as well. But look, very pleased to be in, you know, in a good place. We just have to make it count now tomorrow when the actual big points are, not when the not when the single points are. So yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll 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 get our heads over to you know to, to, together tonight and make sure we're in good shape. But I'm very pleased, although I'm probably got the face like uh, like the milk's gone off. Um, I'm actually pleased to be to be back uh, battling with Ash rather than just kind of watching him drive up into the distance and, and trying to hang on to him. So you know, tomorrow I hope will be a different day where we can challenge. Um, but let's wait and see. What's going to make the difference tomorrow in terms of being able to, to challenge? And how much on a par do you think you're going to be in race trim? I'm going to slip a couple of raw prawns into his dinner tonight. See what goes on, see if that helps us. Uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, the conditions have obviously played played a little bit of a part of it today as well. We lost out on the dry running this morning with, with our issues. So of the dry running that would have been useful, we were, we were sat on the sidelines, unfortunately. So 101 excuses, but uh, you know, I, think, I think the weather will, be, will, will play a bit of a key to it. But I think the most important thing is that we, we just keep focused on the on the bigger picture. Trying to stop this old boy next to me. He's, uh, he's, he's a bit fast at the minute. He's got a bit of a ball patch coming on, but uh, I think that's the only thing we can do to stop him at the minute. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. We'll, uh, we'll see you out there tomorrow. Um, back to you guys. Thanks, Louise. So well done to Ash Sasson. And uh, it promises to be a really lively first race, one would hope, tomorrow, especially with Ricky Collard fighting uh, in the mix as well. Ash Sasson, I did touch on this earlier, leads now by a huge margin. The Goodyear Wingfoot Award points awarded for qualifying performance. Jake Hill second, then Tom Ingram ahead of Colin Turkington and Josh Cook. Dan Camish sixth, then Ricky Collard, Dan Robottom, Rory Butcher and Aaron Taylor-Smith rounding out the top ten. So, tomorrow we will be on, uh, on ITV4 at 11.15. Full day of racing, not only from touring cars, but two sets of Porsches, the Caymans as well as the Carrera Cup, plus uh, Minis and F4. It's going to be a busy day of racing, and uh, 11.15 ITV4 is when it all begins. For now, though, from Louise Goodman, Tim Harvey and David Addison, goodbye from Donington.